Today we've pulled together a panel of moms to chat about issues only moms seem to face from dealing with unrealistic expectations, comparing ourselves to other moms, to simply learning to be content. I'm joined today by Shelley Cancanio, proud mom of Hannah and Noah, Vicky Walinga, proud mom of Caleb and Madeline, and Jill Savage, who has way too many kids for me to <laughs> list. So she has five. <laughs> and she's also the author of several books, two of which we'll be ta talking about today, No More Perfect Kids, Love Your Kids for Who They Are, and No More Perfect Moms, Learn to Love Your Real Life. Welcome, ladies. Well, thank you. It's exciting. <laughs> this is great, because we were just saying we could talk forever as moms. So, Jill, first of all, I want to ask you, I think the question that most moms want to ask, why do we want to be perfect? Why? <laughs> you know, I think there's a lot of reasons. I think one of them, though, is our culture. Our, all you have to do is walk through the checkout line at the grocery store, and you see on the front of magazines images of perfect bodies, perfect living rooms. Uh, you see messages that might say, body after baby, three months. Yes. And you look and go, yes. body after baby, three years. <laughs> Doesn't so even true. look the same. And so I think that we're surrounded by images of perfection, uh, you know, uh, photoshopping, pictures, all of that. Or we, we even go to the movies and they solve some big life issue in two hours. Mm -hmm. Or we watch a sitcom and they solve an issue in 30 minutes. And so I don't, I think what happens is we don't realize that the message that's coming across to us is that perfection is attainable. So then we start expecting it of ourselves and our loved ones. Yeah. And so I think we need to be free of that. And that's ultimately why I wrote No More Perfect Moms and No More Perfect Kids. And social media plays a huge, Yes. A huge role in all of this. How do you ladies feel about social media? Oh, for sure. Everyone's posting on Facebook all the 10 things that they did for their kid that day. And or the perfect family pictures. Yeah, yeah. And you're just trying to reel in perfect way to announce that you're having another baby. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. In fact, what's happening is we compare our behind the scenes reels to other people's highlight reels. That's what happens yeah. on Facebook. Yeah. You know, 50 years ago, you, we used to say, at least in the States, we used to say um, that you need to keep up with the Joneses. Well, you only saw the Joneses once a week at church. Right. <laughs> now we see the Joneses once an hour on Facebook. Yeah. Yes. So it's always in front of us. Mm -hmm. Have you ladies, and I'm talking to all of us, experienced that one time when you're just like, I am the worst mom <laughs> ever? I, I feel like I can make any moment into a worst mom yeah. ever moment. Like last week, I found like a liquid zucchini in my fridge, oh. like, in my fridge, and it was so gross. I'm like, I'm the worst mom ever. We could have made a liquid this. salad because <laughs> I had a liquid green I fed, something I don't in there my kids too. Have vegetables. Yeah, I'm I'm really bad for that. I feel like any moment I can just turn into my worst moment. It's yeah. Yeah. Last those week, are I, the things that need to be on Facebook. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> See? Crisper really yes. <laughs> Last yes. week I had, I was telling Shelly, our, our youngest is one and a half, and uh, he went to his first day at a big daycare center, and he was the only kid who couldn't feed himself properly with his utensils, and I've I equated that to I am the worst mom ever. Mm. That, and, and that's what I thought. So you talk about the perfection infection. Right, right. Because we, are, we p impose perfect on ourselves. And without even realizing it, we often impose it upon our loved ones as, as well. And, the, and what we need to do is that we need to give them the freedom to be human, mm. give ourselves the freedom to be human, to make mistakes. I intentionally started the book out with a story of forgetting one of my kids at school. Yes. <laughs> Completely spaced it. I mean, I was in the middle of making dinner and I was helping a kid with homework and the phone rang and all I heard was, <gasps> Mommy, did you forget me? Aww. And I'm like, one, two, three, four. <laughs> oh my gosh, one is missing. I obviously have too many kids and it's too late to send any of them back. So I, I intentionally started it with that. But the other thing that I think is really important for us to understand is that um, God uses those fails to do some of his best work because I picked up my daughter and I was so, I mean, I was just sick to my stomach. I felt so bad. And I said to her, Erica, I am so sorry. Will you please forgive me? And, you know, in that moment, it, God used my fail to actually teach my daughter what to do with her imperfections. Mm. 
And so I really believe that he can redeem those broken places, those places where we have mom guilt, and he can redeem them for his good in many different ways. Yeah. I know um, in reading No More Perfect Kids, I said to you just before we went on that this came at such a great time. Like, it's just right on time for me in my life. I have an eight-year-old and a one-and-a-half-year-old. One but um, expectations that we put on our kids right? Mm -hmm. We have this uh, great idea of what our kids are going to be like before they're born. We have all of these plans and aspirations. And then when they don't meet them, all of a sudden we're, we're like, what's wrong? And, and we start to really take it on on ourselves. How do you ladies feel about that? Definitely. Um, our two-year-old is born with Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. um, so the one of the biggest things that we had to get over is sort of to let go that he wasn't going to be who we thought he was going to be, right? Yes. So yeah, before you have your child, you think this is how they're going to be. This is what your dreams are for that child. And we still have dreams for him. It's just not maybe what they used to be. Right. So yeah, you have to get over yourself basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And you really have to get to know your child yeah. because even if you don't have a child that's born with uh, something like Down syndrome, uh, maybe you expected that, you, that your child was going to love the same things you love or let, you know, have the same talents or skills. And if you keep trying to force that upon them, they are gonna feel such pressure. And what we need to do is release them to be who they are, the way that God wired them. Yeah. yeah. You also talk in the book about um, not allowing our, um, our, I guess, feeling embarrassed by what our kids might yes. do. Or just, you know, the, the feelings that come with whatever they do, to take it on ourselves. Like, that is our child and they will make mistakes and that doesn't mean it reflects on me. I think that's the word I was looking for, reflection. So I, I, that's a hard thing for me to do sometimes. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Oh, it is. Because you get upset and you wonder, why isn't my child getting this? Or why isn't he doing this? Or why isn't he doing that? And it does reflect. You feel like it reflects on you. Right. But our value and our self-worth has to be in Jesus Christ. It has to be because he does not change. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Our child's behavior will change. Our child's appearance will change. I mean, just wait for the day where, you know, you're, you know, maybe you remember this because your kids are teenagers now, but they walk downstairs and they say, I dress myself. <laughs> and, you know, they have on the most mismatched outfit. Yeah. And I did my own hair. <laughs> and, you know, they've got this ponytail and they've got all these barrettes and you need to walk out the door. And you're faced with a decision what to do. And you know what I encourage moms? Walk out the door. Just go, but first snap a picture because it'll come in handy for their <laughs> wedding reception someday. <laughs> because that child's appearance does not define you. Mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to be secure in your value in Christ. That's really important because if, if, if you're trying, your child's appearance or their behavior is gonna define you, you're gonna become a controlling parent. Mm -hmm. And the more, I, I, and I had to come to grips with that by having the perfection infection affecting my parenting, I was becoming a controlling parent because I was trying to appear perfect. And then I was controlling them and that was alienating them in a relationship with me. And so it wasn't until I began to move perfection infection parenting aside that I stopped controlling and I was able to embrace them for who they are. Mm -hmm. Shelly and Vicki, are there um, certain secrets that you can share with the rest <laughs> of us as moms? <laughs> Things that you've learned that you, know, you think, yeah, I, w I wish I had done that earlier on. Well, I think, um, now that my kids are teenagers, I feel like when they were younger, the stage where you're just you're trying to teach them so much stuff, and um, and I remember too people saying, "Oh, watch out for teenagers; it's going to be scary." But I actually love having teenagers. I loved it too. And I feel like this is a stage where um, you just get to kind of like see who they're becoming, and and I've kind of switched my mode from, you know, kind of equipping to kind of starting to be releasing, and what. What can I give into their lives? You know, my son's 16 and in a year and a half, he'll be going away to school. So, you know, now my focus is, yeah, I'm still trying to teach him stuff, but I'm thinking about where he's going to go, like when he leaves our home and how mm -hmm. I can be building into him that way now. So it's kind of, it's not an easy shift because I don't want him to leave, <laughs> but right. you just start thinking differently about what stage they're at and how you can prepare them mm -hmm. for the next stage. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. important. How about yeah. you, Vicki? I think just my son's whole story made us think about kids differently. Mm -hmm. um, when my daughter was born, we just, we were, obviously we were very happy, but 
we had a baby, everything was normal, we took her home, we taught her everything we could kind of thing. But when my son was born, everything was different than what we thought. So um, we have no idea what he's gonna do, when he's gonna do it. So every time he does something, we cry. He waves, we cry. <laughs> he drinks out of a straw, we cry. So it helps us appreciate our daughter more too. We just, um, yeah, she learns how to draw a picture of a, a person and we think it's amazing. And not because we wanna brag about her, it's just because it, everything is different. It just mm. puts our whole life and kids' lives in perspective when it's not what you thought, but that's okay. Yeah. Different is okay. Yeah. yeah. And you're celebrating each child for who they yeah. are. Yeah. And that's beautiful. God gave us the gift of being able to do that. Not mm -hmm. everybody gets that gift. And maybe it's not a gift I would have chosen to have mm -hmm. at some point, but he gave it to us and it's pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. Did it take a while to get there, Vicki? To mentally get there where you're just saying, I'm just gonna love Gilb for who he is. Some, no, not really, because at the beginning of his life, he almost didn't make it a couple different times. Mm. So when you're faced with the thought of a son not being here versus a son with Down syndrome, you're gonna choose your son to be here. Yeah. So our story, again, is different than other people who maybe found out a, in a different way. But, um, and there's, we still have moments where we, maybe wish it, it didn't happen that way, but if we can be honest, but it, yeah, for the most part, we love him, we accept yeah. him, and he's pretty darn cute. <laughs> he is. <laughs> yeah. Talk about being a yes mom as well, Jill. Right. That's, that, yeah, that. Another helped. thing that kind of went, Maggie, yeah. <laughs> Pay attention to this one. Yeah, nudge, nudge. I know, and that, you know, I write out of my failures. That's what I do because honestly, for many years I was a no mom. Yeah. And you know, my kids would ask something and, and, and it would be, you know, no. Because honestly, if I, if I had to be really honest with myself is because it was gonna make a mess, <laughs> because I didn't wanna deal with it. And I'll tell you the day that it turned around for me was a day that my kids, it was a hot summer day, and my boys um, were in late grade school and they said, they came running in the house, it is so hot, I bet an egg would, would cook on the sidewalk. <laughs> Can we cook an, a sidewalk, an egg on the sidewalk? And I was like, no, you can't do that. <laughs> and they kind of walked outside dejected and then I thought, why not? Why? Why did I say no? Mm. And it came down to my, it came down to me being frugal. That's a waste of an egg. <laughs> and then it came down to me, oh, that's gonna be a mess to clean up. And so I went back outside. And thinking about boys will actually eat the egg. I know. <laughs> that's I what know. I would be thinking. You're actually gonna eat the egg. <laughs> so I, gra I did grab a dozen of eggs and I went outside and um, I said, guys, you know what? I don't even know why I said no. You absolutely can do this. And the smiles on their faces were precious. I can remember it to this day. And I even, uh, I, I blogged about it, put it on my blog and took a picture of it, of the cooked egg on the sidewalk. <laughs> It was definitely soft scrambled, <laughs> but um, you know, sometimes we just have to ask ourselves, yeah. why am I saying no? And honestly, it often comes down to um, our own selfishness mm -hmm. and not wanting to deal with things. And occasionally that's okay, mm -hmm. but, um, but I encourage moms to be yes moms because there's going to be plenty of times you have to say no to protect them. Uh, they, you know, when they ask to do something they shouldn't be doing. So say yes as much as possible so that that no really means something. Mm -hmm. We only have a couple minutes left and I wanna give you ladies a chance. Is there something that, you know, as moms, that's a big question. You have the mom guru here. Oh, gee, <laughs> that's scary. <laughs> what would be a question that you would point to Jill that maybe even moms in your group are dealing with? Yeah. I think sometimes it's hard to, how do you find a balance between being a good mom to both kids when they have mm -hmm. different needs? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, I, I think what you it, you also bring up is sometimes, in our, you know, our, our kids have different personalities and um, some kids are easier to love than others. Mm -hmm. We gotta be honest about that. In fact, one of the things that we talk about in the book, um, No More Perfect Kids, is seven questions our kids are always asking themselves. And they don't, they, out, they don't ask them verbally, but they ask it with their behavior. They're asking it, we asked it when we were children. And one of them is, do you like me? Hmm. I know you love me, but do you like me? And um, so we really, sometimes we have to work hard at um, being what each kid needs. Uh, I, I, especially having ch five children, I will confess that I have a, had a tendency at times to parent by herd 
meaning I herded everybody to church <laughs> and I herded everybody to school and I stopped seeing them as individuals. Mm -hmm. And I think the key to that is to see them as the individuals that they are and to be the mom that they need in that moment. And that's hard, but it requires us to move from surface parenting to deep intuitive parenting. Yeah. And that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Good answer. Mm -hmm. Shelly? How about, because I know I often feel, you know, because I'm a working mom, you know, my kid, like I feel often I don't have, I'm not meeting the needs in every area of my life. Like I feel like I'm not enough yep. to everyone. <laughs> so how do you like get over just feeling I'm not enough? <laughs> yeah, I felt that way after the third child was born. I never felt there was never enough of me mm -hmm. to go around. Um, but one thing I had to realize also is that um, I was doing some of that myself by saying yes to too many things outside my home. Mm -hmm. um, and I really backed off and, and uh, decided that, you know, my number one ministry needed to be to my kids. And so I love leading worship. I love serving on our, in, in music in our church. I haven't now done that for about eight years mm -hmm. because um, as much as I love it, it was, I didn't, there wasn't enough of me to go around anyway. So I think it starts by also evaluating uh, how much am I, you know, how much is there of me to give to my family? Yeah. And especially if you're working outside the home. Mm -hmm. Somebody once told me one major, one minor. And, um, and if you're working full time outside of the home, there's your major as far yeah. as volunteer activities. Yeah. So then really only something minor where you're, you know, bringing yeah. cookies or yeah. doing something like yeah. that. This is mm -hmm. good. Thank mm -hmm. you, ladies, for joining us. This little tidbit of a mom group <laughs> on national television, but you know. <laughs> the books are No More Perfect Kids, No More Perfect Moms. Thank you so much again, Jill. Thanks for having me. Both books can be found in our e-store.